Cardiac Assessment. This presentation is going to go over some key components of Chapter 29. The heart has a sac-like layer called the pericardium in which the heart snugly fits inside. The wall itself has three distinctive layers. The heart is like a well-oiled, electrically primed pump with many moving parts. Think of your car. Ever look under the hood? The big engine that runs the entire vehicle is similar to the heart. The heart is fueled by oxygen, blood, and is electrically charged. When assessing the heart, a simple mnemonic can remind you what area of the heart you're listening to. It is over that area you can tell whether or not that valve is fun functioning correctly, such as hearing a murmur. The mnemonic that I like to use is, all physicians take money. All means you're over the aortic. Physicians means you're over the pulmonic. Take is the tricuspid, and money equals the mitral. All blood enters the right side of the heart through two veins, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava collects blood from the upper half of the body, and the inferior vena cava collects blood from the lower half of the body. Bringing that in, the blood leaves the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava and enters the right atrium. When the right atrium contracts, the blood goes through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, the blood is pumped through the pulmonary valve and into the pulmonary artery. From there, it goes into the lungs where it picks up oxygen. Why does this happen? Because blood returning from the body is relatively poor in oxygen and needs to be full of oxygen before returning to the body. So the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs first to pick up oxygen before going to the left side of the heart, where it is then returned to the body full of oxygen. So you can kind of think of it as like, used blood is going in the right, fresh, oxygenated, healthy blood is coming out of the left. Blood now returns to the heart from the lungs by the way of the pulmonary veins. It goes into the left atrium, and then when the left atrium contracts, do you see a similarity pattern going here? The blood travels through the mitral valve, and guess what? Into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is a very important chamber that pumps blood through the aortic valve and into the aorta. The aorta is the main artery of the body. It receives all the blood that the heart has pumped out and distributes it to the rest of the body. The left ventricular has a thick muscular has a thick muscle thicker than any other heart chamber because it must pump blood to the rest of the body against a much higher pressure. Blood circulates through the body in two main routes. The systemic circulation transports oxygenated blood to the tissues and brings deoxygenated blood back to the right side of the heart. The pulmonary circulation transports deoxygenated blood to the lungs and brings freshly oxygenated blood back to the left side of the heart. The coronary system is the portion of the systemic circulation that perfuses the heart muscle. This next video is going to go over the heart cycle. It is the contraction and the relaxation of the heart, which equals one beat. You can think of cardiac output as the amount of blood pumped into the circulation in one minute. With each contraction of the ventricles, blood is pumped out of the heart. Stroke volume is the amount of blood a ventricle pumps out in one contraction. Cardiac output is the volume of blood that each ventricle ejects every minute. To find the cardiac output volume, multiply the number of heartbeats in one minute by the stroke volume. 
At rest, the cardiac output for an average adult male is about 5.25 liters, 4.9 liters for an adult woman. Cardiac output increases with physical activity, rising to a maximum that may be 4 to 7 times greater than the resting output. This difference between resting and maximum output is known as cardiac reserve. Heart rate and stroke volume are regulated by the autonomic nervous system and by hormones in the bloodstream. Other factors such as age, weight, and physical fitness also influence cardiac output. Afterload. It's the force that the ventricles must overcome to eject their blood volume the pressure in the arterial system ahead of the ventricles. It's like a resistance band. It's the rubbery band the blood must push against to get out. Preload is the amount of cardiac muscle fiber tension or stretch that exists at the end of diastole, just before contraction of the ventricles. Greater the volume, greater the stretch. Think of a water balloon. The more water in the balloon, the more it stretches out. All charged up, depolarization and repolarization of the heart. After the depolarization and repolarization occur, the resulting electrical impulses travels through the heart along a pathway called the conduction system. The impulses travel out of the SA node and through the intra intranodal tracks to the Bachmann's bundle to the AV nodes. From there, they travel through the bundle of his and the bundle branches, and lastly, to the perjunky fibers. This is a great picture showing you the cardiac conduction system. EKG is like a map of the heart. Each, EK, each EKG cycle consists of five waves. Those waves are labeled P, Q, R, S, T. The P wave represents the normal atrial depolarization, the QRS complex, one single heartbeat, corresponds to the depolarization of the right and left ventricles. The T wave represents the repolarization or recovery of the ventricles. There are many diagnostic tests out there. Cardiac catheterization is considered an invasive procedure because they are going to be using a going into the femoral artery or the radial artery and they'll basically be fishing a wire up there to take a look at the inside of the heart. A TEE, or transesophageal echocardiogram, is, can be done at bedside, but it's also considered an invasive procedure. Often the patient needs to be sedated, and they actually take a tube down the patient's throat, and they're actually looking at the back side of the heart. The echocardiogram, or the 2D Doppler image, can be done at bedside. A stress test. There's many types of stress tests out there, but most commonly, you'll hear that the patient is undergoing a treadmill test. A 12-lead EKG is, a, is a, like an electrical map of the heart. The leads look at all different angles of the heart, and you're able to determine where there might have been some cardiovascular muscle death during a heart attack. It's key to understand the anatomy and function of the heart to comprehend the disorders of the heart. Familiarize yourself with how the heart beats and you'll be one beat ahead.